Let's see Kepler in action. Um, to help me with, with this demonstration, we have one of our finest parallel programming engineers. His name is Stephen Jones. He also happens to have parents who are astrophysicists. And we're going to show you a demonstration around astrology, astronomy. <laughs> and today is a perfectly good day. Well, come on out, Stephen, for goodness sakes. I know. Cosmologists, astrologists. You know, that's quite <laughs> They're <a difference>. related. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Stephen. So first of all, um, we want to talk about we want to talk about um, uh, we want to talk about Kepler, and you guys have been working on some amazing simulations of it. Now, before we could we could see the new simulation, the new capabilities of Kepler, we want to take ourselves back a couple of years to remind you the demonstration that blew you all away on Fermi, just to level set everybody. So with that, why don't you, um, let's, you take over. So, so what are we <coughs> looking at here? This is, I mean, it still blows me away. It's the demo we showed a couple of years ago for the Fermi launch. It's 20,000 bodies simulated, about 25 frames a second. Um, it is an amazing piece of computing, um, you know, a teraflop of power feeding into just something would have been the top of the line supercomputer a bit over a decade ago. It is absolutely beautiful. I, I still use this when I'm talking to people as an example of getting so much power out of a GPU. Now, this is an example of, of a, a class of, of um, simulations called n-body simulations. Right. This is, a, this is a, an n-body simulation where the gravity between all of these different bodies is being modeled, and this particular algorithm interacts every body with every other single body. It's an n-squared algorithm in technical terms. Everything is interacting with everything, everything else. That's right. And we compute it um, one frame at a time, and we do it so fast that we're able to do a million particles per second. And we see, of course, this galaxy now in motion. So this is 20,000 particles, but because it's n-squared, that's 400 million interactions at each image. It is an wow. enormous amount of computing wow. power. That's something else. OK, well, that's Fermi. That's all very impressive. And, um, and we surely admire the work that we've done in the past. But what's the big deal now? Let's, let's, see, let's see Kepler. Let's see Kepler. Kepler. Right. <laughs> so this is. All right, what are we looking at here? This is a whole step up. This is, instead of 20,000 bodies, 280,000 bodies. We're modeling it with the bonsai um, multipole code out of the observatory of Leiden, and in collaboration with Haron Bedorf and Evgeny um, Gabarov, we have had so much success in taking this code and applying all of these amazing Kepler things to it. Now, I, rec I recognize this. this I, I see this. Wh where are we right now? Tell, orient so us in the, in the, in on the vast on of space. On the, on the lower left, we have the Milky Way. And on the upper right, we have the Andromeda Galaxy. The, uh, the year is up in the top left-hand corner. This is about 3.8 billion years in the future. So we've the simulated, just for the audience, we've simulated from present day to 3.8 billion years from now. So if this is not a time machine, I don't, I don't know what is, right? This, this is a perfect example of a time machine. And, and we, we've, we've reached the moment where really interesting stuff starts to happen. The Andromeda galaxy is heading towards us, and we are going to end up merging. Not the first pass, but later on. So this code is based on a thing called a tree code, where instead of interacting every body with every other body, we create this tree hierarchy of interactions. And we can see the hierarchy right here. This, this grid that you see is showing with ever-increasing intensity where we are focusing the compute power. And so each box is bracketing about 16 stars. And out of 280,000 stars, that makes an enormous number of boxes. And so we are using the dynamic parallelism that you just talked about to very efficiently prune out these boxes and generate this tree structure in a way that would not have been possible before. And you can see these beautiful swirls of stars just being flung around. There's a 
there's a 50-50 chance the sun's going to be out there and one of those just flung out of the galaxies. Wow. So in three and a half billion years, um, we are going to collide with Andromeda. That's right. Um, it'll sweep past us, tear all these stars away, and come back for a uh, killer blow. So, so I, I guess the, the advice to the audience is to put our personal matters in, in order. <laughs> because in three and a half billion years, we, get, we, might, we might end up in a different galaxy. Yeah, you know, now you know what's coming. Uh -huh. So you know, watch out, guys. Get, get, your, now get, one, get your will written. Now, one of the things that's, that's really curious is, is, um, to me is uh, all these stars and all these, well, all these stars uh, on the outer fringes of the galaxy don't seem to be moving nearly as slowly as I would have expected. I mean, in, in the center where, where there's greater mass, um, I would have expected the, the, the planets and the, gal and the stars to be rotating much more quickly and outside much more slowly. But why, why am I not seeing that? There's something wrong with the simulation. Um, so you've actually hit one of the great mysteries of astronomy. Um, based on exactly these kinds of simulations and on observations of stars, they realize that the stars in our galaxy and every galaxy we can see are going way, way too fast. And without a good explanation for what this was, without good computer models to show it, they, were, they spent about 50, 60 years trying to figure it out. And finally, in models approximately this size that we can now do in real time, um, they figured out that there is, in fact, only 10% of the matter in the galaxy is visible to us, and 90% of it is invisible dark matter that lives in a big halo around the outside of the galaxy, holding it together and driving that inner illuminated core. Ladies and gentlemen, we've identified dark matter. <laughs> I think someone ought to issue a paper, write up a paper quick. <laughs> Real-time oh, dark this matter. This is fantastic. So, so but your, parent, your parents, just seriously, are, are astrophysicists, and, and, mm -hmm. and they, are, they are obviously going to be incredibly proud of the work that you've done here. Now, what, what are the, why, do they, why do they care what happens three and a half billion years from now? I, well, I think first and foremost, it's fascinating. It's beautiful to see. Uh -huh. um, and in addition, the, uh, the laws of physics that apply at these intergalactic scales apply right down to the molecular scale as well. So this exact multipole algorithm that we are using here to simulate galaxies, we can use to simulate proteins and molecular dynamics at the tiny nanoscale. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, you know, the laws of physics, they spread, they're equal for everywhere except quantum mechanics, which nobody understands. And it's like the, what the, the simulations we see here apply directly to our day-to-day -day lives as well. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, that's really, really terrific work. Good job, you guys. What a great demo. Thank you very, very much. much. Good work. <laughs> One million particles per second two years ago. Ten million particles per second two years later. One on Fermi, ten on Kepler. A fantasized artificial galaxy to now a full-scale simulation of the Milky Way and Andromeda. What huge advance in just two years can't wait to get this technology to you so that all of you can enjoy programming Kepler the way that our engineers has. Now, the way to get that is two. We're announcing two products today. We're announcing two Keplers today. The first Kepler, the first Kepler is dedicated towards imaging, signal processing, seismic analysis, where single precision is sufficient and the most valuable resource is bandwidth. So the Tesla K10, based on the Kepler architecture, has three times the single precision performance of today's Fermi Tesla, and 1.8 times the memory bandwidth. Unbelievable step up in just two years. The second Tesla is called Tesla K20 focused in on double precision performance, three times the double precision performance of Fermi, includes the HyperQ and the dynamic parallelism technology, and it's intended for applications like computational fluid dynamics, finite element analysis, computational finance, physics, quantum chemistry, so on and so forth. Two new Tesla 
GPUs. One of them is available now, and the other available in Q4 this year.